Uh, when we were down to ministering a while ago, this man said, I went out and actually successfully ministered healing to 20 people this afternoon. Hallelujah. Well, you see, that's what every one of us ought to be doing on a daily basis. And this is the thing that will heal back problems. And this is also the area where you, who might not know a whole lot about healing the sick, can go out and very timidly grow somebody's arms out and see them get healed by the power of God. Everybody stand to your feet, okay? Now watch Charles. Everybody watch Charles, okay? Because it's real important that you stand with your feet in the right position. Put your feet together. Put your toes and your nose in the same direction. In other words, don't twist because if you do, look what happens. You look like there's something wrong with you. All right, now, everybody swing your arms down. Loose at your side. Then bring your arms out in front of you, palms facing each other, about a quarter of an inch apart, okay? About a quarter of an inch apart. Now, stretch forward as far as you can. You'll discover that that will lock your elbows out there, okay? So stretch and push as far as you can. Now put your hands together. Put your, okay, bring them back together. Bend your elbows and look at the end of your fingers and keep holding them that way, all right? Now listen to me very carefully. Those of you whose hands are exactly even, you may sit down. Those of you whose arms are uneven, you keep standing because we're going out there and we're going to get two or three what we call goodies just to show you how you can do it. Even though you didn't attend the healing seminar, we want to show you how you can do it. We're going to do two or three, and then we're going to let some of the students do some of the rest of them, okay? Now, they're going out there looking for what we call a goodie. Do we have a goodie out there? Does that man have a goodie? Oh, isn't that nice? Okay. Anybody else got a goodie out there? That means like three or four, five, six, seven, eight, nine inches short. I have faith up to nine inches because we had a man at one of our services that had, had his arm cut off, and it was nine inches short, and God put nine inches of bone right in it as it grew out. I tell you, nothing's impossible with God if you'll just believe. Okay, what do we have up here? One, one, two, okay, one more. Okay, here's another one. All right, now the rest of you will have to sit down and we'll get, you'll get all healed at one time. Is that a real short one, Art? Okay, all right, now the rest of you sit down. Oh, here's our chiropractor, Dr. Prater, back again. Glory to God. I did. We wanted you to sit up here on the stage. Hallelujah. Uh, some Praise of you Lord. must know Dr. Prater. Amen, all right. Well, they know him from today. Hallelujah. Yes, okay. Now, they are videotaping all of these sessions, and tomorrow night, a daytime tomorrow, and we'll soon have these on videotape available for you. Give us about a month, and we'll put them all together, and then you can order these and watch some of these powerful healing. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're going to bring up uh, one at a time, simply demonstrate the power of God, let you see these arms grow out, and it's really not arms growing out, it's your back being healed, and we found out all of the way from your uh, pelvis bones, uh, down your tail bone, up your neck, eyes healed, deafness healed, and all kinds of things came about because of this as the doctors explain it. Okay, now, have you had a back problem? Yes, I had a back problem. I, uh, talk real loud. I have a back problem and a low back problem and a leg problem. And he's yeah. also hard of hearing okay. in that ear. Step forward. Can we have the, the chiropractors and the doctor out here, okay? Okay, do you want to get them checking first? Yes, let's okay. let them check in yeah. first. Okay, now, uh, come on, uh, doctors, come on over and do whatever you want to. Yeah, uh, they're going to they're gonna just do a little checking here because uh, these doctors can determine very quickly, you know, they don't do a thorough examination, but with a cursory examination, they can tell so much about what it is, and then we're going to direct the power of God, but we're going to let some of you do the healing, and then we're going to, in a, just a little bit, we're going to let all of those out there that had a short arm, even a little bit, we're going to let people minister to people, people healing people, okay? Praise the Lord. Okay, oh. <laughs> he's going to sit down over there. He can't yeah. reach him. <laughs> he stands on his own stool in his, his clinic. <laughs> okay, now let's, let's find out what he discovers here. He says, tender right there, and the, and the man said, mm-hmm. I don't know how they find all those little tender spots, but they know where to look.
<laughs> he has restricted range of motion and rotation and flexion and extension, which is dropping the head down, bringing it back. There's a lot of, uh, as he just said, there's a lot of tenderness right at the base of the skull here, which is causing nerve pressure there. And uh, there's a lot of muscle spasms involved with it. Uh, in the low back, he's got what they call a hypolordosis. It's a, he even jumped right there with that. It's a lot of, uh, it's an increased curve. And it's too much of a curve there. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. All right, praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, now, okay, now we're gonna, do you wanna check him too or is that enough? Okay, come on over, Dr. Leroy is gonna give him a little check too and see if anything else we can discover. Okay, praise the Lord. Oh, he didn't. Okay. Okay, now, now, turn around facing me this way. Okay, enjoy your laughter, but we're gonna go ahead and heal this man in the, in the laughter. Put your hands out like you did. Put them out like, stretch them out real good. Now, everyone, watch the end of his hands. In the name of Jesus, we command that spine to be healed. We command it to go into place. We command all the muscles and nerves relax. Vertebrae go into place. Now, in the name, don't squeeze them. Arm, grow out now in Jesus' name. Now, watch the power of God as this arm grows out. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There it comes. There it comes. There it comes. There it is. Hallelujah. Okay, praise the Lord. Now. Now let's get a chair because he's got a, a short leg also. As soon as we do this, then you can bend your back and it'll be new. By the way, we forgot to tell you, this surgery will cost him $82,000. <laughs> you still want to stay around? He said, put it on my card. <laughs> no, you got it already. Jesus paid his hospital bill 2,000 years ago. Good to see you later. already. Watch my thumb. In Jesus' name, lower back, I command you to be healed. Now watch that leg grow up. See, that's God's power. See it? <laughs> His leg went out about an inch and a half the other way. But God's power is adjusting. Here it goes back. In Jesus' name. There you are. Now try your new back out. Stand up, do anything you want to. Bend over, twist it, whatever. Is that all right? No pain? He, now he wants his belly removed. Okay. Now, he said he doesn't have any problem. Okay. Uh, now, you chiropractors, see if that loosened it up. See, this was the exciting thing this afternoon. Tomorrow morning, starting at 9 o'clock until 1 o'clock, the public's invited, uh, but all the healing teams must be there. And we're going to let the doctors answer questions as to how to heal certain things. And we're going to learn a whole lot of things. This will all be on the videotape, too, so that uh, we're going to have a record of this so that uh, for our future healing explosions and that, that picture over the satellite that was prophesied today, I believe that there will be pictures of some of you healing the sick right on that satellite. Praise God. That's the doctors. Let's... On the first examination, of course, he had a tremendous amount of tension there. Uh, right on that right side of the lower part of the neck. And uh, I don't find anything there now. He says there's just a slight bit of sensitivity, but that, that's that. going to leave. Let's get that. Hallelujah. Now we'll... Oh, 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 oh. I command that the last bit of tension to go. I command it to totally heal, total leverage in his neck. In the name of Jesus, all pain go in Jesus' name. Now try it. Good. Good. That got it. Hallelujah. Okay, go on your way rejoicing. Hallelujah. Dr. Owen, this is Dr. Owen from Jacksonville, and I want you to, I want him to tell you what he just got through telling me. I think this is so fantastic what you just said. Well, when he was talking about the $82,000 or $80,000 yeah. operation, uh, I had a patient this afternoon, Jesus and I had a patient that told me she had spent over $40,000 on her neck 
with chiropractors and medical doctors, and she got healed today. Hallelujah. Isn't that fantastic? Oh, hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. Okay, where's another one? Let me give it. Just take them down and line them up and let everybody do them at once. All right. Okay, now. Okay, now, what we got? How many got? Yours, uh, yours was shot. One, two, three, four. Okay, now, you four come down here at the bottom. And uh, space yourself out there. About, uh, you know, one over here, one down here, one over here, and one over there. Any way you want to. Now, I want to start back somewhere at least six rows back from the front. And the first four that get up here get to do the healing. On the healing teams. These are just on the healing team. Hallelujah. See them come running They're out? They're coming. Okay. Oh, oh that's okay. all. Pick, pick your two of you can stand around one patient, okay? Now, now listen carefully. Shh, shh, shh. These who have short arms, now those that are doing the healing, you've got to remember this. This is good teaching. Thou shalt not stand between your patient and the audience because they can't see what's going on. So the ones doing the ministry of healing, you stand on this side. Let the ones who have the short arm stand, to be sure and stand so that the audience can see your short arm, okay? Whichever side short faces so the audience can see that. Okay, now here's this lady over here. Now, don't stand between the audience and this lady. Some of you that are ministering healing, come back this way. The audience must see, okay? And ushers, you'll need to come around too so the audience can see. You'll need to come around on this side. Okay, now, now hold those four. Hold your arms out. Lady, would you come over? Uh, would you move over this way too so they can see? Okay, now the four of you are going to do all this at one time. These people were trained this afternoon how to minister healing. So now do not squeeze your hands together. Hold them out. You notice how different this one is? Notice how pull your hands a little closer together, sir, this one right here. Pull them close together. Just don't squeeze them. Notice this lady over here. Notice this one. Everybody watch one of them. You can't watch four at one time. Now, now you people that are doing the healing, go ahead and make your command. But everybody watch the end of one of these hands. Watch God's glory. Now, here you're standing between the people. Lady, shh, come back this way. You're blocking your whole audience, okay? There you go. Now, go ahead. Clap when you Clap see them begin to grow. Clap when you see grow. one grow. Clap when you see them when you watch See that one growing grow. out there? Clap There's when you see it grow out. Clap when you see it grow out. Clap There's when you see it grow out. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Catch a hold of it and pull it out. That's what you're tempted to do. Does that one grow out all right? Has he had arthritis or anything? Is it still coming slowly? What's been your problem? I've got, uh, I've been diagnosed as uh, severe condomalacia. I don't know what that is. It's, uh, it's a form of arthritis. Okay. Now, 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 no, no, here. Stretch him out. No, keep him stretched. Now, Remember what we taught you today? Yes. Don't stand between the audience. That's the next thing we've got to teach the people. Now say, in Jesus' name, in watch Je the end of it. In Jesus' name, devil, I bind you, devil, I bind by, the you of the of God. by the power of the Spirit now, of God. Devil of now you devil of arthritis, out in the name of Jesus. Out. Grew out. Give Jesus a hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, now. Now, shh. Everyone who had a short arm, will you stand up? And only those who had short arm, even if it's a tiny bit, you stand up all over the audience. Okay, now, be alert. Listen to what I'm going to say. Those who are now standing, I want you temporarily to hold one hand up like that. Okay, now, you people that have been trained on the healing teams, go find you somebody and Sick go up. minister to them. Go get somebody. Hallelujah. Go get somebody. As soon somebody. as somebody comes to you, drop your arm down. We'll know everybody's got a, a ministering angel with you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. As soon as somebody comes to you, then pull your hand down. Here's several over here, healing teams. Shh, 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 shh. Way back over on this side. There's several needs of ministry of healing. Go over to them. Praise God. Anybody over on this side? Here's two over on this side. Somebody quickly go to them over there. Healing teams, move fast. Way over on this side. Over in the middle, back here toward the back, there's, uh, there's several hands. As soon as they come to you, drop your hand. 
Okay. Now, as soon as the yeah. arms begin to grow out, you begin to clap in whatever area it is, and that's the way we'll be able to tell whether or not the arms are growing out. So you begin to clap as the arms grow out, okay? Go ahead and minister, healing teams. Minister, go right and ahead. Clap when you see them grow. Clap when you see them grow. Hallelujah. Thank, thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Thank we you, Jesus. praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we praise you. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. In glory. Well, glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, now Hallelujah. All right. Okay, now. Now, everybody that got your back healed, your next healed, or whatever, will you wave at Jesus if you got healed? Look around. Look at the healings that God's power has done through the believers. And the believers will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. They have recovered. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Okay, now, now would everyone sit down? Go back to your seats. Everyone sit down. If your patient didn't get finished, you can finish that later, okay? Praise the Lord. Everyone go back to your seats now, please. How many of you really believe church is fun? Hallelujah. All right. Well, I, I do this every night now. I want everybody Shh. to say, I love Frances Hunter. Say, I'm going to keep on loving her. I'm going to keep on loving her. Even when she insults me. Even when she insults me. Church is fun. Did you know that? But I want to tell you something else. It is more fun to know Jesus Christ personally than anything else that I know. Excuse you me know, just a moment. Uh, would you mind stopping ministering now and then after we dismiss, continue minister? If somebody is not listening to me, would somebody go touch them, ask them to stop ministering now, and you can continue after we dismiss in a few moments, okay? Amen. So everyone be seated, please. I accepted Jesus 20 years ago, and it turned my life around. It is not a question of religion. It's not a question of going to church on Sunday morning. And as I was listening to some of the arguments that those young men were giving you, they were saying, well, I don't happen to believe this. And I felt like saying, well, tough, God does. They were giving their own personal opinion about whether or not you had to go to church because there were so many hypocrites there. Well, I'll tell you, how many of you praise God for hypocrites in church? Is it better for them to be in church than out there wallowing in sin all over the place? Glory to God, they got an opportunity to hear the word, so praise God for every hypocrite that goes in church. But you know, beloved, Christianity is not a Sunday morning, Sunday night hat, and Wednesday night hat. It's a 24-hour-a-day personal walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's not a question of, well, should I just sin a little bit today? God won't know. How many believe God knows everything? God knows also what's inside of your heart, whether it's clean or whether it's dirty. And you know, Jesus is coming soon. The body of Christ is thoroughly convinced of that. And yet he's coming back for a bride without a single spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. And I have news for you. He is not coming back with a steam iron to press the wrinkles out of your dress. Did you know that? And he's not coming back with a shout, with a can of shout either. To, he's coming back with a shout, but he's not coming back with a can of shout to spray on your dress and to get the spots out of it. He is coming back for a bride without sin. And you might say, Francis, it's impossible to live without sin. No, it isn't. You know, God's Word says, Be ye holy as I am holy. Would He tell you to do something that He didn't give you the power to do? Would He tell you to do something that He knew that was impossible for you to do? In the natural, it's impossible, but with the power of God, you can walk in the beauty of His holiness, and that is when we all have. That's when you can really walk in the abundant life, when you walk in the beauty of His holiness. I heard a statement the other night that I thought it was tremendous. It says, says a guilty conscience is what causes 100% of all mental problems. A guilty conscience. What is a guilty conscience? When you're doing something that you know you oughtn't to do. Amen. 
when you're a Christian, all you have to do is read God's Word, and He makes it so plain what you're supposed to do. He makes it so easy because He tells you what to do. He tells you what not to do, and He makes it so simple. And yet we continue to want to stick our toe into sin, just to experiment a little bit. We want to see how close we can sit to sin and still sit on the safe side. You know, the day I got saved, God put a hate for evil in my heart. I looked at evil, and I ran as fast as I could in the other direction because I wanted no part of evil from that day on. But I want to show you something. I just want you to be real honest. I'm not going to mention any particular kind of sin. I'm not going to mention any kind of habit or anything else. But right now, in the name of Jesus, I want every person to raise their hand who has something in their life that they know is not pleasing to God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, raise your hand. Look around. Don't anybody close your eyes. Everybody turn around and look around. You see what I'm saying? The body of Christ is honest. We're admitting that I have things in my life that are not pleasing to God. Beloved, I have one word for you. As a matter of fact, I said to somebody up in Pittsburgh last weekend where Charles and I were, I said, you know, I'd never make a pastor's wife for this very simple reason. If somebody came to me for counseling, I would say, quit sinning. And then they, that wouldn't make me very popular to begin with. Then they would come back the next day and I, and for more counseling, and I'd say, well, did you quit sinning? And then if they said no, I'd say, well, don't come back to me anymore because I gave you the answer. How many of you know that the answer to life is to quit sinning? And just about that time I said that, and somebody said, well, I was laughing, you know, because uh, that isn't really, a, I guess, an approved way of counseling. Uh, I saw one of those little calendars called the book calendars. I don't know if you have them in your gift shop or your bookshop or not, but I thought it was so neat. Somebody showed me one. They wanted us to autograph it, and I opened it up to April the 28th, 1986. And you know the scripture on that page? It says, get some sense, quit sinning. That's from the Living Bible, so if you want to see what the, where it is, you'll have to go and buy one of those from their wonderful bookstore over there. Every person in here, without exception, I want you to repeat this after me. Maybe you'll say, well, I'm a sinner. I don't know if I want to get saved. Repeat it anyway. Because you know what? We had a Muslim that said it the other night just for a joke. <laughs> How many of you know what happened to him? <laughs> Why, he came up to me afterwards. He's so turned on because I made him say a sinner's prayer. Well, I want every person in here, without exception, to say this. I want you to make a decision with your will tonight. You know, Christianity is not an emotional thing. I mean the decision. When you make a decision with your will, that's the decision that sticks. Did you know that? Yes. That's the decision that sticks. So with your intellect and with your will, I want you to make up your mind tonight that you're going to serve Jesus all the rest of your life. How many of you really mean business with God? Raise your hand. All right, then say this after me. Say, Father, I don't want to go to hell. Oh, I want to go to heaven. I don't want to die. I want a rapture. But Father, your word says only the holy shall see God. And sometimes I'm not very holy. So I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to wash me in that precious blood of Jesus. And now, Lord Jesus, I open the door to my heart and I invite you to come in. Take my whole life and make me the kind of person that you want me to be. And now, Lord Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you that you have come into my heart just like you promised. And Father, I thank you that my sins are forgiven. Now, you know, I want you to do something very special for me. Paul preached all the time, Christ in you, the hope of glory. The first thing that I ever learned after I was saved was that Jesus Christ was living on the inside of me. And about two days after I got saved, I remember I was running through my big printing company down in Miami, Florida, and I noticed that my heart was beating real fast. And I looked down and I said, Oh, Jesus, you're in there. I got you in there. And I want you to do exactly what I did. Put your right hand out. Everybody put your right hand out, okay? Slam it over your heart. Say, I shut the door. 
I lock it. I throw the key away. Jesus, now you can never get out of there. Oh, give him a big hand. You got him locked. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Where is Jesus right now? Ah. If you were at a football game, you'd be yelling and screaming. And I ask you the most important question that you'll ever be asked, and you say, in my heart. <laughs> Where is he? Yeah. Ooh, you're just wonderful. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> All right. How many of you have a lower back problem in here tonight? Would you stand? If you have a lower back problem, okay. Now I'm going to ask the front rows to clear off, please. Those of you who have lower back problems, you come up here and you sit down on those chairs, and then the first student who gets to them gets to grow out their legs. Okay, I'm going to ask these doctors up here to come down with me, and if you will form a real orderly line. Now the lower back problems are all on the front row of pews, okay? The lower back problems are all on the front row of pews. Well, I guess that do what I better do at this point is dismiss you, so if you need to go home, what time is the service tomorrow morning? Nine o'clock. What are we going to have? A doctor's panel. Okay, so eat a big breakfast because we're not going to dismiss you until one o'clock and then we're going to give you the afternoon off to watch the healing tapes if you would like. Now, those of you who need healing and you'd like to just come up here and form a single line, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Julie and Dennis Machula. Are you here? If so, would you please come forward right now? I want you to assist on the teams that are up here. I want these doctors to come down there. Some of you who have worked with us in crusades, I would like for you to come down here and we'll just lay hands on you. Father, I just thank you for every person that's here tonight. I thank you, Father, for holy laughter. I thank you for all the miracles that you did. I thank you for salvation. I thank you for the baptism with the Holy Ghost. I thank you, Father, for every person now who is up here who is going to be healed by the power of God. And I give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, those who need healing, come right around the base of this step up here. And those of you that I've asked, to come up, I've lost them all. All right, raise your hand so they'll know who you are. Okay, oh, there's Alex, praise the Lord. Alex and, and his daughter got four people out of wheelchairs at the Pittsburgh Healing Explosion, all right? Oh, there goes something good over there. Well, I'll tell you, you see, this is just gonna be a little sample of what tomorrow night is gonna be, people healing people. So just tell the person who's in front of you what your problem is, and then they'll just take care of you from there on, okay? All right, Norma Jean? You gonna go down there, okay. All right, the people who are behind the front row, please step back. Remember that, that scripture that says, if a heavy person falleth upon thee, thou getteth squasheth. Okay, so if you'll just back up so that we can come down there, okay? And would you go down there, please? No, I want you to go down there because if I talk Okay. Okay. Just go any place. Just go any place. All right, now make sure. Altar workers, would you please come forward? Uh, I wonder if you'd all stop just a moment because somebody just handed me a very interesting vision. Shh, because you'll want to hear this. It said, at the beginning of this evening's service, I saw the following vision. I saw a huge funnel that seemed to be suspended above the congregation. Then, as we were praising the Lord, I saw white grains of rice or wheat poured into the funnel. As the grains came out the bottom of the funnel, we began to reach for and receive them. Instead of eating the food completely, 
we each ate a small portion of the grain and then carried the, remember, the remainder of the grain out of the church with us to feed the others. Now, how many of you can see what we're saying? You see what this vision says? It says that you're going to receive healing tonight, but you're not going to keep it all for yourself. You're going to go out and you're going to pass it along to the believers, okay? All right. Now, um, where's that beautiful girl that plays the piano so beautifully? I'm just going to ask her to minister in music for us as we just come out there. As soon as we lay hands on you, I'm going to ask then that you will go back down the aisles, okay, so that um, the, the next group can come in. Now, we're just going to quickly do this. Just receive because God wants to heal you. How many of you going to get healed tonight? You're going to believe right now? Okay, real good. Bless you, real good. <laughs> 